probably a lot of you had the crazy idea of going ahead and creating your own programming language. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this lesson, except we're not going to go into all the particulars on how to create a programming language from scratch. We're just going to be swapping out some keywords in Python so it can look like it's our own programming language. And to demonstrate that, I went ahead and created some code with my own syntax. So here we have an assignment with is connected, which is going to take dead, which I personally routed to false. And it's going to check if is connected, it's going to say connected and if it's not connected, it's going to decline and it's going to say not connected. So it's a normal if else check. And I also wanted to demonstrate it that it works literally with any Python code. So I went ahead and created a for loop that says each I in numbers, which in Python is range. And it uses the print statement, which I rerouted to say. So it's going to print I 10 times. And the coolest part about this is that we can run this code and it's going to run just like normal Python code. It's going to check whether is connected and if is connected is alive, it's going to print connected. Otherwise, it's going to say not connected. Then it's going to print 10 numbers. Now we can also go ahead and edit this code. And if we rerun this now that I changed it to alive, we're going to get connected. And you can customize this however you like. You can introduce your own keywords if you don't like alive and dead or if you don't like check and decline, of course you can introduce your own. You can even translate that into your home language, but this short project is going to demonstrate how you can achieve this. Now, first of all, you want to go ahead and create a new file, and this is just going to be the usual main.py, and we can close the other text block. And after you create a main file, you're going to have to go ahead and create a text file, since the py file has a lot of restrictions when we want to introduce our own syntax. So once you have a text file and a main file, we can get started immediately inside the main file. And the first thing we want to do is import from tokenize the tokenize module and the untokenize module. And we're going to create one function, which is called run code, which is going to take a file of type string. And we're going to define some keys. And this is going to contain all the information on the syntax we want to create. For example, if you want to create an if statement, you can go ahead and choose the word you want to be replaced with if. And in this example, I decided to use check. And for the else block, I decided to use the decline keyword. So here we can go ahead and route it to else. And you don't need to cover all the Python syntax for this to work. You can choose only to change the ones that you want to and the rest of the keywords will function as normal. But I'm going to go ahead and paste in what I had earlier. I think the syntax that I created was great for the previous example. So in the for loop, I decided to call it each instead of four. And instead of range, we used numbers. And instead of print, I decided to use the keyword say. And for true and false, I used alive and dead for those constants. So at this point, you probably have a slight idea on what we're going to be doing with these. We're actually going to be swapping these out so that Python can read them as normal keywords. And in some weird way, you can look at it as a filter so that when we run our code, it compiles to Python code and then Python can actually run it. But now that we specified a file, we need to go ahead and open that file. So here we'll go ahead and say, we're going to open the file in read byte mode and we're going to open it as the source. Now we need to create a list of tokens in here so that we can put them together later and actually build the code. And for each token in tokenize the source.readline, and that's without the parentheses, we're going to do the following. So if the token dot string is in the keys, we're going to go ahead and create a token which is going to be of type tuple, and it's going to take the token dot type, and it's going to take the keys at the index of token dot string. Else, we're going to go ahead and create the same variable, except this time we're going to take the token dot type, and we're going to insert the token dot string directly. So all that this is doing is grabbing everything inside our text file. And if it finds a match for check and decline, it's going to swap them out with if and else. So we're going to create a new list that actually swaps that out. And then we're going to put that list back together as normal Python code so that we can run it. So with all that being done at the bottom of the if else, we need to go ahead and append 
NFT to the tokens list because we want to go ahead and append the correct Python syntax. Now under the with open, we can go ahead and create the code, which is going to equal untokenize. And we need to pass in the tokens because now they are tokens that have been tokenized and we need to decode that into something readable. So decode, and we're going to decode it as UTF-8. And then we have a very special method in Python called execute, and that takes any text file and executes it as Python code. So we're going to go ahead and execute that. Now, the last thing to do is to go ahead and test this function. So if name is equal to main, we're going to try to run the code and the file is going to be set to file or it's going to be set to code.txt. So it's our text block over here. And just to make sure everything's running smoothly, we're going to run the program and it finishes with exit code zero, which means we have no problems so far. But now let's go ahead and test out our own syntax. So inside here, we're going to go ahead and first create a variable. We can say that is connected is going to equal alive. And below that, we're going to go ahead and say check is connected. And if connected is true, we're going to go ahead and not print, but say we are connected. And we can already go ahead and rerun this. And you'll see that in the console, it's going to run this code and it's going to say is connected. And the cool thing about this is that if we make a syntax error and try to run this, it's still going to be able to find out where we made that error. So you can still debug the code inside your make-believe language. And let's also demonstrate the decline, which is going to say no connection. So we can now change this to dead. And as soon as we run that, it's going to say no connection. And just as the final example, I'm going to go ahead and show you my for each loop. So for each I in numbers, and we're just going to say to the range of five this time, we want to say I, and then we'll get zero to four printed to the console. And I personally love that we can do this. I mean, we can also go do something silly such as dead is equal to alive. And that's going to evaluate the false because of course false is not equal to true, but that we can use these as true and false is just ridiculous. And maybe it's not so impressive with Booleans because you can always attach that to a constant since a Boolean is a constant, but to be able to change a keyword such as if and else is just incredible. But anyways, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. And I'm incredibly curious to hear what kind of syntax you guys can come up with. If you do come up with something super cool or wacky, do feel free to leave that in the comment section down below. I would love to read it. But otherwise, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.